Golf WRX editor Andrew Tursky, and we're here at what's probably the most mysterious golf company in planet Earth right now, Artisan Golf. I got John Hatfield and Mike Taylor. We're gonna go explore in here and figure out what Artisan's all about. So uh, we're gonna start here in the CNC operation, uh, starting with a billet of 303 stainless steel, and um, we'll see a putter come out of here. different lofts. I take everything back to the same top line thickness, so if I'm adding more loft, we'll have a little bit wider sole. If it's less loft, it'll be a little bit thinner sole to get the, gotcha, but it's, gotcha. it's based off the top line um, thickness. Um, and, the, and then we've got, there's some, and we've, I've had anywhere from a quarter of a degree of loft to five and a half degrees of loft. So quarter if, of degree of loft. Yes, sir. So seems a, seems a bit low. Well, I've seen everything, side. you know, and it's, you know, the I've seen quarter to, you know, five really, but depending on the stroke, I mean, that's what rolls it the best for right. them. So, uh, and good players that have that kind of, you know, discrepancy in loft. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, well, some of them, if I, I leave some of them with the face all the way on. Let me show you real quick, because I have to. So some of them I'll leave. So basically that's what you're seeing. It's holding on to this right now and cutting the part. Okay. And so a lot of them will flip over and will face down to that and leave some meat for me to work with. But if I got to go five and a half, I don't have enough. So I've got to start from here oh, no. and work it back. Uh, so I'll leave so some. So how do you start getting it? So we'll go over here and I'll, I'll show you. So show me. these, um, this particular uh, customer's three degrees of loft, we, in the machine right now, it's being cut at three once we cut the face, okay? Yep. So that's kind of our base point. But, and he's, he's three degrees, so I'm gonna come in here, uh, again, I have extra meat on this, top line, so I'm going to take it down. With this cutter, I can take a lot of meat off quick. After, from here, now's the time when I can go in there and I change out my cutter and uh, We'll put the face treatment on there, and the mill depth is just, you know, different depths that we cut it. The right. deeper you cut it, the less surface area there is for the ball to contact, so it's a softer feel. Now that's just smooth. Yeah. You know. So how do you get the uh, face texture on there now? So how then, does it go from that to what I'm looking at right there? Same, same exact idea. Just another tool. It's that just you another plug tool, in. and it's run at different speeds gotcha. to create the look. Okay, because that's just a pattern that we're creating. It's not with just this. a pattern; that's a sexy pattern. It right? is a sexy pattern. I'll give you that. But you know, that's something you just come up with. Hey, what looks good? But um, this this tool will create that look at the different speeds that I'll run it at, and then the depth creates. Soft, mid, or light mill. Okay. Do you have any uh, 
rhyme or reason to like the shaping of it? So it kind of variable throughout, aggressive. Or? Yeah. So at the end of the day, I believe in having a face. Uh, I, I believe controlling speed and everything with loft. Um, because I think you can get a good roll when you get the right loft. Loft more so than face texture? Well, yes. It's okay. it's really not. This is about, you know, this this isn't creating any kind of super magic roll or anything. It's just, I want to get this deep because you like that softer feel. And I want this light because you like a firmer feel. Right. Okay. Or some sort of sound quality. It's a sound really more than anything, gotcha. an audible that's good for you mm -hmm. um, and then you want to make it look it looks cool right I mean that's part of the milling <laughs> at the end process. of the day it looks cool yeah. so you know you come up with something that looks good but also the purpose of it is is to get the different audibles coming off the face to dial in what sounds good to you what is giving you the feedback that's good that you feel confident in and, and that's what we're trying to do. Gotcha. So, um, you know, from there, we also have the sight lines. I mean, we no sight lines, three sight lines in the flat, whatever. It, it really doesn't matter. It's what, if something you like or you want or you've had in the past or whatever that you really like, and we'll, we'll do it. Um, when we're fitting, you know, we want to try to find out what do you line up the best. And like I said earlier, there's, you know, it's amazing. You know, if you put a dot on there, some guys just don't line it up good. Some guys don't line up, line the flange good, you know, and, or, and line up a line on the top better or whatever. How often do you see someone come in for a putter fitting that has a completely wrong sight line it's, for their game? It's more than you think. It's, well, I think it'd be about 60%. It's, so it's, it's, it a, pretty, it's a pretty big number. Yeah. Um, and I, it's so important, but it's a pretty big number. Okay. Um, and and you can see, you know, what's really cool in watching and working with people. People read the greens pretty good, at, at a lot of different levels. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, you think, oh man, you know that guy didn't know I can't read greens, or but they're pretty good. They really are. Um, but if they're reading the green and then that they're blind, you know, a ball left of their intended line, they've got to make an adjustment to even hope to make the putt, and that's a fact. So now you're starting to make adjustments. I really want to get people where they're lining it up good first, so they're not having to, you're subconsciously, your brain will go, whoa, this isn't gonna probably go in, and you're yeah, gonna yeah, make yeah. an adjustment. So we'll get the alignment part right, um, and then we can start dialing in the, the sound, the loft, and the build, the lengths and all that, and right. grip size. I like to start everybody with the smallest grip because I'm, I believe in feel. Um, and then we kind of work, we work up into, it's okay, but I like to start them there. The putter industry is kind of going the way of fat grips. You know, is it though? I think there was a time when they were going there, yeah, I but I think it's- a couple more years ago it was, uh... Came out hot yeah, out I think it's from what I see. I think it's backed off a little bit. I okay. think there's a place for that. Um, you know, more face balance. If you've got something, a putter that wants to rotate, you know, I personally like to see that their hands are able to go with the rotation of the stroke. Mm -hmm. I think it's more fluid, and so. But I think there's a place for all of it. I think you just got to know what works best. It's not just, oh, well, if I get this grip, then I'm going to putt better. Well, sometimes you may be going the opposite direction, you know. And so when we're out here and we have time to go through that and talk about it and have some different stuff, to, you know, different grips, and then, then, um, then it's kind of easy. But the other thing that we do is when a putter's built here, when it leaves here, the last thing I want to do is for it to get to the customer and 
they rip the grip off and put another grip on there. <laughs> you know, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Water, I, right? Now I, I don't know your build, so I don't know what you're putting on there. So we offer whatever grip you want, doesn't matter. That's what we want to finish your build with. Mm -hmm. So we have the data here on our build sheets that we keep, you know, and, um, and then, you know, we, we got to be careful. We've got a, a dollar amount that you're credited for a grip, but if you go above that, you pay the extra, you know, but it doesn't matter what it is. We're going to, we want to get that grip for, for the customer. We can do a little sight lineage. This guy's a sight line on the top line. but then we'll take it down to depth and boom we're done sight lineage done sight lineage done <laughs> easy so um, so now we've we've you know we've got the idea of the build and we've they chose a head, they choose a hosel, um, sight line, we know what loft, so we cut the loft, put the sight line on. Now we're ready to go into, um, I think I got one, I mean here's one here. You know, obviously there's no uh, engraving or anything on it when it starts. So we got to put all this on here. He wanted some information on there. You know, some phrases and stuff. Can you get anything the, you want, like through your right? Through anything, your system, you anything you want. You want. Uh, so what we do, like initials, um, we do a lot of initials around the star, which kind of looks cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but initials are just part of the deal. When we get into to phrases and stuff, there's a small upcharge. I like to keep the soul blank. Not this one. I mean. <laughs> Here, that yeah, doesn't yeah, matter because yeah. gotcha. the draft, it's never going to touch. If it okay. does, we've got a problem. But I like to keep up in here blank. But I've had some guys that wanted to put logos or something on there, and I've had guys create their own logos. And you'll that put they, that on and there then we'll, And that's an upcharge. There's a setup charge and then a, a time that it takes gotcha. on the laser that we charge. Gotcha. Uh, How but, much are we talking about for a, for a putter? So, so on, if let's say somebody has a logo or something, that they want to, they've created, or they're, we had one guy that went out and had somebody do it for them and sent it to me, and I'm like, okay, yeah, cool, we'll put it on there. So it's $25 setup charge, and then it's $3 per minute on the laser. So, so however right, long. Put it, it on the clock. You put it on the clock, and that's what it is. How about that? And some of it can run, you know, 30 minutes. Depends on what it on what it is, and that's yeah. why we did it that way because you don't you don't know, right? And it's time, uh, but I think that's very it's very fair, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's what they wanted. So, uh, so what's like the average putter going for? Total? So we start. I, I'd say we start at eight seventy five uh, for a satin finish, stainless steel, uh, with your initials, um, and they go up to eleven hundred with different finishes. Now, I can go a little higher than that if we start doing a lot of that artwork, but that's right. just kind of a basic. You spend a lot of time on that laser process. The laser can, can it's cool though. Those dollar bills counting. So, uh, <laughs> so, you know, bottom line is we've got, got a lot of dollars in material. I mean, Ty's not inexpensive. Thompson's not inexpensive. So um, there's, there is, uh, there's some money in that baby. In material, absolutely. And so, but I, I we really, um, we really worked hard on, on finding that price point that we thought was fair. Right. And uh, and so that's that's where we're at. There you go. Um, now, obviously, you guys aren't like mass producing products. No. So you're going kind of like one by one down the list. It's how does one. It work? So that's. And, and that's been something that we're really trying to get better at. It's 
you know, because you get all these people at once. And I would say right now, you know, anytime you start something new, even though we've done this in the past, we have some different operations that we hadn't done before. And it takes time to get your process down. And, and it's really getting good now. Um, we do the absolute best to keep things in order. But some guys take longer to, well, you know, I'm not really sure. I know I want this, but I may, like, like on their initials, or do I want initials, do I want a phrase or whatever. And they might take two weeks, yeah. you know, and so that, so we just run them through the best we can. Gotcha. Um, Finish-wise, we can do everything in-house except for PVD, and then the black ops, we have to send it out. And that takes some more time. Uh, we're at, you know, probably, I like to tell everybody about four weeks. Four weeks? Mm hmm If PVD or Black Ops, we're talking, it could be six, sometimes maybe even a little longer. But everybody's like, hey, I'm good. Just do, you know, do it like, like we want it. Yeah. Um, and so, and we'll get into a situation, we'll get it all done, and then we got to talk about paint fill. And I'm going to tell you right now, some of the coolest paint fill ideas that you could ever imagine. I mean, I, I've, I've had some guys go, you know what, I want to do this color, and I'm like, man, I don't know. And when I do it, I'm like, oh my gosh, He's that looks so cool. So yeah. that's, that's been a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, we also, uh, I can kind of take you over here. You know, here's a finish. This is uh, the blue bonnet finish. Um, you know, guys that want, hey, can you do something to my back pieces? You know, we'll, I'll heat those and get oh, some cool beautiful. colors going. Rainbow. Uh, you know, did the weights and, and just a lot of, this guy wanted a high polish nozzle. Yeah. So instead of just blasting it, you know, like that, Oh yeah. I went ahead and took it to high polish. Yeah. So I mean, you're really getting to to dial in what exactly you want. What you want, yeah. And, How do you uh, achieve a finish like this? That's heat. All heat. It's all heat. Put some flame on this. Put some flame. Uh, yeah. Here, show the face. The face is cool. <laughs> She's gorgeous. And a lot, you know, it's funny, I mean, these things, I tell everybody, they're snowflakes. You know, snowflakes, when you're, yeah, when every you're, one of them, right? When you are got that heat going and you you see it and you're like, oh, man, that looks good. If you go just a little bit too far, it's gone. So you got to stop it. So you got to stop uh, and sit like back and look. It's looking and so, sexy. Uh, you get some unique stuff. Uh, different finishes out of it, but everybody's liked it. Um, that's a carbon putter. Um, you know, the whites are done. Yeah. Um, heck, we're even. We're even doing. You know, I'll even take these and heat these up. Oh yeah, nice little touch. A nice, nice little touch. How uh, long does a finish like this take you to achieve? Well, I mean. I can show y'all too. If I can take this and show you the polishing, real quick. So this is no one, and it starts out square. But he wants these bumpers soft. Okay. okay. I've gone in and kind of roughed it out, uh, and then we can kind of go in there and look at, at breaking all the edges and and you know I'm trying to I'm trying to make everything flow. And everything blend in and I want them to look down and and kind of go like that and go cool let's go <laughs> I don't want them to go down and go oh that looks kind of weird so I really really like to take my time and and blend things in to where they they flow really really nice um, and so you know I'll I'll hand work those um, and break the edges and, and break just try to make everything flow but yeah, I mean, this, this gets us to this point from here. 
uh, we're going to paint fill. You know, we'll, we'll put whatever finish we need to get to. We'll paint fill, and then we'll put everything together, the weights and everything, dial in the weight that we're, we're trying to achieve. And then it goes into the assembly process and the build and specking everything out and documenting that. Um, and then it's clean and ready to go. Ready to go. We also, uh, on our putter head covers, it, oh yeah, we we like to uh, Let's check those out. Yeah. So we we serialize every putter that goes out of here. Oh, nice. So this is your initials. Eleven is consumer. Uh, that's his. That's his um, customer number. That and that's the date that we finished it. Yeah. And so the head covers, now they can go in there and pick what they want to do on a head cover. And uh, we're doing these head covers at Best Grips. Okay. Um, and, and they, so. so the serial number on And then we'll put the serial number on the head cover. Some of them go, no, nah, I don't want it, but a lot of them do. And then we're also doing some uh, leather grips with best grips okay. that we serialize. Is that this? Yeah, that's one right there that we'll serialize, but we can do different colors, you know, with them. And, yeah. and so, I mean, they're really getting head, grip, head cover. It's all custom. Mm -hmm. if somebody wants the logo on there or something, we'll, Boom. we'll get that done for them as well. So uh, we try to complete, you know, have a complete package, you know, head covers, grips, the build, the head, mm -hmm. and everything, um, and it's, it's a good experience, and it's a blast for us, so. All right, Sean. Thanks for uh, taking me through the artisan golf putter process. It was really fun. Learned a lot, and uh, hope you guys did, too.